This is my version of problem three in hypothesis testing one. Here's the situation. We've got somebody uh, who is looking at uh, some mosquito repellent. They're, they're looking at the way that they're measuring the effectiveness of the mosquito repellent is measuring the percentage, uh, the percentage of, uh, of skin, of exposed skin that is not uh, bitten by the by the insects <laughs> by the bug bites um, so they run an experiment they they look at 23 people uh, sit them out there with the bugs for 10 hours and uh, then measure things and they find out that the average uh, is going to be 95 95 percent on the average of these 23 people had 95% of the skin that was uh, was protected. Um, and we know the the standard deviation for that sample. We don't know the standard deviation of the population. Now here's the the conjecture that somebody's making. Somebody's saying that that on the average the population, the overall population is going to be uh, be 91 percent protected uh, compared to the alternative hypothesis of of, uh, of it being greater than 91 percent. Now the evidence that we've got right now is suggesting that uh, the alternative hypothesis might be the right hypothesis and uh, the reason why is uh, is there we are with uh, uh, the, the normal distribution told us that this distribution was normal and what we've noticed here let me see if I can get uh, this piece of equipment working uh, so there's this 95 up here somewhere okay now these are the conjectures that somebody's making we're worried about testing those conjectures and seeing what's happening. Now notice one of the, the alternative hypothesis says that mu is greater than 91. It's also true that the little bit of testing that we have done is kind of agreeing with that alternative hypothesis. 91 is above, uh, above 90. Because this is greater than, then this is really, they're not saying it explicitly, but it's really the the null hypothesis is that mu is less than or equal to 91. Statisticians don't specify that. They just tell you what the alternative hypothesis is so that that's, that's the situation. So so this is going to be a one-tailed test is, is what's happening here. Um, here's our, our situation. We do the, the test. We found out that uh, that our mean, our x bar, was 91. So over here in our sample, we've got the x bar is equal to uh, 95. I'm sorry. And we know that the sample standard deviation happens to be 7. So if we had known enough information we knew that the the mean of the by, by the null hypothesis if the null hypothesis is true then the the mean of the population is 91 and the standard deviation is unknown if we had known that we would have been able to talk about the standard deviation over here the standard deviation of the sample means would have been equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of 23. Unfortunately, we don't know what uh, this standard deviation of the population is, so we're going to have to approximate this by using the standard deviation of the sample as our best evidence there in the square root of 23. So that means that we're going to need to use a t distribution instead of a of a z distribution. If we had been able to use this, we'd use a 
a Z distribution, but in this case we're going to need to use a T distribution. So let me just put a, a T distribution over here. And the particular T distribution that we're going to be wanting to worry about is the T distribution. Uh, this is going to be a zero, and we're going to have a degree of freedom equal to 22. The degree of freedom is always one less than the sample size in, in these cases. Now, so that answers part of this question. The answer right here is going to be the degree of freedom. That's, uh, that's an easy part of all of this. Now, the other piece of uh, thing that they're telling us is that the alpha is going to be uh, 0 0.05. So what we're saying here is that we need to have some number right here so that this area, I know that it's the upper tail because of the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis says that it's going to be an upper tail t-test and that area right there needs to be a 0 0.005, 0 0.05. Is that right or is it there are two zeros on there? Okay, great. So that's uh, the thing that we're going to need to, to find. Uh, what we want to know then is are some some Im important t values. This t value right here can be found easily. Let me just write it up here as the q t. I can use r to do that. Q t of 0 0.05 because I need to find the quantile associated with that probability where the degree of freedom is equal to 22. Okay, so um, R can tell me that piece of information. That's going to be an important piece of information because that's called the critical T value. Okay, the critical T value. Now the test statistic is going to be how this number, 95, converts over here. You see, if 95, when it converts to a T distribution, if it ends up here closer to zero, then we're, we're going to, uh, um, fail, we're going to uh, fail to reject the null hypothesis. But if it ends up down here in this critical region, then uh, then we'll reject the null hypothesis. So those are what those two things are. This value right here, this T value right here is called the critical T value. If we're on one side of the critical T value, we'll fail to reject. If we're on the other side, we'll reject the null hypothesis. So that's the critical T value. The other thing is how this number translates over here and that's easy to find. We're just going to take 95 minus the 91, the x value minus the, the mean, divided by the, this uh, standard deviation. We're interested in the number of standard deviations. So we're going to use this value, the closest one that we've got there, which is 7 standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of 23. Okay, sorry that writing is sloppy. Uh, but that value right there is, uh, what's it calling it over here? The test statistic. Okay, there's our test statistic. There's our critical T value. It just depends on how those compare. So if this test statistic, I'm sure somebody's got some thing going on. It's probably a T something or another. I'll call it a T0 for right now. If that T0 ends up to the left of this T, then we fail to reject. If it ends up to the right, then we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, I hope that's helpful.